There's Mr. Frank. What's eating razor bran? <laughs> Close. Salad. A giant salad from um, Olive Garden. Yeah, salad bran. My wife had a um, party yesterday. For her maintenance, um, one of her maintenance guys is um, retired after 17 years. So they threw a party for him. And he loves Olive Garden. You know, he's an old man. So they catered in Olive Garden. And one of the things that they um, had left over was this giant thing of salad. And my wife's like, you know what? My husband will take it. It's the only thing he really eats there is the, is the salad. So uh, that's what I'm eating. I had most of it already. I'm going back in. They do make a good salad. Not good Italian food. They're fast fast food Italian food, but a lot of crunch and a lot of croutons. Oh, that one was kind of soggy. So my goal for today is to um, finish this page, maybe write on something else. That was a crunchy one. Keyboard Crouton Dust is my second favorite Primus song. <laughs> ah, Primus. They had their, not even their 15 minutes, they had their four minutes.
Grape nuts time. Grape nuts are gross. My mother used to buy them for us. We would be forced to eat them for breakfast. And you pour milk. You, you, ha you have a whole bowl full of grape nuts. And you pour the milk in. And after you've taken your first bite, all the milk is gone. Sucked into some weird vortex. And then the grape nuts aren't even wet. I'm eating the only thing that is good from Olive Garden, their salad. <laughs> did your um, did your mother ever do probably the most egregious crime of all unfortunately eat kashi that's another one it's just like rocks and twigs and all the milk disappears and then when you swallow that crap it like rips your throat apart Yeah, yeah, shredded wheat. When you're like, wait a minute, how come the other side of this should be that white, delicious quarter pound of sugar on each of these? Actually, yeah, my mother used to buy that crap too. She would buy the big ones. Like she was, she wasn't even like, okay, I'm gonna give you the bite sized ones. We're gonna, I'm gonna buy those giant ones that you have to break apart because you only can put like one and a half. In the friggin um, bowl yeah the giant shredded wheat yeah those were awful I actually have um, frosted uh, shredded wheats in the house I ate some the other day Wheat abex? I don't, I don't know what that is. Is it like, like wheat checks? But obviously sounds grosser. I'm a fan of corn checks and rice checks. Yeah, he might be making stuff up, Michael Schotter. It is Positive Friday, so I'm positive he's making shit up. Seems legit. They came in big biscuits like shredded wheat, but they were more like flakes glued together and they actually tasted decent, so I assumed they had sugar in them. No, no, I had no idea what that was. Maybe they just made those in Sayerville, you know? That was like a Sayerville thing. Or Brooklyn, wherever you were born. But, excuse me. I'm going to burp because of those croutons.
I hit the next page. Tom says, told this guy twice I'm going to be 100% unavailable during AuthorCon. So he's sending someone in the week before to learn, which is never going to happen. Told him it's at least a month to be somewhat competent. I think he thinks I'm not serious and will answer work stuff. Boy, is he in for a surprise. Exactly, yeah. I'll throw your, I'll throw your phone out the window if, if this guy starts calling and you answer. Ms. Frank says, I had them in Ireland, but they did start selling it stateside at one point. At one point. What are you, Canadian? I'd never, I'd never heard of them. That's right, motherfucking Chad fucking hoey. Positive Friday, bitches. Welcome in, welcome in. Ever have Shotter O's? Those are delicious. Shotter O's. I mean, they have a weird taste to them. But they're not bad. <laughs> they taste Canadian. Where is Michael Schotter from? Michael, where are you from? I always think Canadian, but I think it's because of... Um, I always think you and uh, Ronald... McGilvray are both Canadian, and I don't think I don't think you're both Canadian. I don't maybe Pittsburgh. Well, that's close to Canada. Yeah, I don't know why I just, I always thought you were Canadian as well. So they taste like Pittsburgh. So you know, flecks of iron, steel, dirt, penguins. Pittsburgh is also known as South Canada. Exactly. Candace Nola is in uh, is in Pittsburgh. I just sent her out a package today. Lots of pirates in Pittsburgh. Yeah, many many pirates. I'm out of, I'm out of coffee. It seems. Positively legit. Tom, I noticed you started another chapter. I'm happy for that. I did not read it yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait until you're finished with it. Willie Stargell. We are family. Uh, yeah. So my wife, uh, she was home this morning. Um, and then we took my car, we took the charger back <laughs> to the mechanic for the 87th time. Yesterday, she had to go and, um, and drop her sister off at the mechanic to get her keys. Her sister had her car worked on there. And, um... The car would not start when she turned it off. So she had the guy come out, mechanic, and he's like, oh, yeah, that just sounds like an alternator or something. And she's like, well, you guys check this. He's like, it's not coming up as that, but we'll replace it. So we had to drop off the car this morning to do that. And then my wife made sure she took care of the cat litter, a couple of stupid things. I put my all the mail together for the week, let her handle that, which is nice. And then she ran off to go to work and then go to her mother. She'll be back later tonight to pack for the week. She'll be gone for a week. She'll be gone till next weekend. So like 10 days, maybe. This trip. Then her sister will be home for like a week. And then her sister's going away for like a month or two. So that'll be the really the crazy one. But in the meantime... Um, I got the weekend to myself. I'm going to write. I'll be on Twitch. I decide I'm going to do the. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to watch the Noir films. My goal is three a day, three a night. After I've gotten all my stuff done, and then um, the next day do a review on my Patreon, um, and just have that free. And then she'll try to see as many of these. I have a, a list of the hundred, the hundred best noir films of all time. 
A lot of them are in the 40s and the 50s, but there are other ones that are um, in the 90s. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Yes, yes, that's the number one noir film of all time. Who framed Roger Rabbit? I miss Stargill's stars. Then they miss you. Tom says, yeah, I'll finish it today during work. I might be able to get a chapter in before we leave for her family's place on Saturday, which would be around 1 o'clock. Here's the thing, Tom. If you finish that tonight, I would be very happy. There's no rush for you to write again tomorrow. I might write tonight, but I probably will be watching movies. If you get it done early today at work. What is that? It's like a thing in my key. I hate, I hate little pieces of my flesh. <coughs> if you uh, get it done early, or then um, then I could write that next chapter tonight, or later today, which would be good. We'll be curious to know where Touch of Evil lands on that list of noir films. You know what, buddy? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to F and tell you right now. Because I actually have it pulled up. Although it's, it's not doing anything. Here we go. Touch of Evil. It's not in alphabetical order. It's in order. Like seven. 1995. That's the 84th best noir film, according to this list. Where the hell is it? I thought it was up here somewhere. Maybe it's not. Nope. All right. We're going to go back the other way. I'm, I'm not doing it like in order. I'm not going like 100 down. I'm just going to do some random ones and then check them off. But I will add the list uh, to it. Asphalt Jungle. Memento. Zodiac from 2007. Key Largo. What movie? Uh, Touch of You, I forgot. As you imagine, there's a lot of these that are e evil. Fargo. Miller's Crossing, Mulholland Drive. <laughs> Some of these I've seen already, but I will I will watch them again. Taxi Driver. Ellie Confidential. Night Moves from 75. Blade Runner. As the 29th best noir film. I'll watch it again. Postman Always Rings Twice from 46. Of course, there's uh, The Wrong Man from Hitchcock. Like, I'm not going to watch all of them, obviously. Although, who knows, I might. The other thing is going to be, I'm not paying for any of them. So they have to be on, like, Tubi. Netflix, free from Xfinity, those kinds of uh, things. Number 11, The Maltese Fal Falcon. Not even top 10. Huh. Sunset Boulevard, number 10. Laura, number 9. Kiss Me Deadly, number 8. Out of the Past, number 7. The Third Man, number 6. Touch of Evil, the fifth best... No, according to this list. Fifth Best Noir. Directed by Orson Welles, 1958. So that would, that's actually on my list to, uh, to watch it if I can. Chinatown, number four. Double Indemnity, number three. The Big Sleep. Obviously, Raymond Chandler, number two. The number one, according to this list, The Woman in the Window from 1944. That is the best 
noir film. Now, I've, I've looked at a bunch of different lists, and there's um, all kinds of things. So if, if I go down this list and they give you 100, and I'm like, yeah, I can't find more than like 30 that are free to watch, then I will go switch to another list. So there you go. So those are some of the, uh, some of the movies I will be watching. Tom says this weekend is going to be a bunch of birthday stiff and stuff. Okay. <laughs> Miss Frank directed by Judas Priest. Any move, any movie directed by Judas Priest, I will be watching this weekend. Miller's Crossing is excellent. Mister's Crossing, not nearly as good. I'm going to be honest with you. The top ten seems it's like the same top ten on like three or four different lists. Like a couple are moved here and there. A couple is have. Maltese Falcon in like number 10 or number 9. But otherwise, it's a pretty good list. Again, I'm not starting from the top. I'm not going to... I'm just going to watch some random movies. And I'm also, my goal is not to go like... I'm going to watch three movies from 1945. The goal will be I'm going to watch one from 45, one from the 60s, and one from, you know, 1997 or something. Kind of spread it out that way if possible. So I will be uh, doing that. Some of them I've seen, some of them I have not. I will, um, Mr. Frank, please with language. Some of them I will, um, I will watch again. So, should be good. I mean, if they're all available, technically, in 33 days, I'll, I'll watch all of them, which is probably as many days as my wife will be gone, so... Have you heard the new Priest album? I think it's their best in a long time. It didn't seem like it was English, to be honest with you, Frank. I thought that was French. Um, no, everybody keeps saying, here's my problem with it. I've not heard it at all. Except the people that, are, that, that I know that are posting about it are saying, oh, it's the best since, like, Nos uh, Nostradamus album. I'm like, I thought that album was shit. Like, I haven't, I haven't liked anything Priest has put out in like 20 years, if I'm being honest. They have some stuff here and there, but otherwise, meh. It's, they've run out of ideas. So, I will eventually listen to some of it. I mean, I feel the same way about Iron Maiden. I haven't really listened to Maiden in a long time. Everybody's raving about the new Bruce uh, Dickinson solo album, and I'm like couple songs are pretty good, but you can't beat that Tattooed Millionaire, that first solo album from 30 years ago, you know? That is a perfect, to me, that is a, a perfect album. And then everything after that is like, yeah, yeah, you could have done this with Iron, you could have done some of this crap with Iron Maiden. I think it compares favorably to their best stuff from the 70s and 80s. I don't think there's a weak song on that. That is interesting. So that sounds interesting. Yeah, if you're going to compare it to the stuff from, like, the last 20 years that I think is garbage, then I'm not interested. But if you were, Michael, if you're going to die on that hill, if you're going to say this is the best stuff from the 70s and 80s. I'm a huge, huge Judas Priest fan growing up, and I'm not a huge fan of 70s music, but I loved all of the 70s Judas Priest stuff. And, um, and obviously all the 80s stuff. And in, into the 90s, a lot of, you know, all that. So, all right, I will check it out then. And then when uh, I hate it, I am blasting you. I'll start creating all kinds of negative memes about you and, and how you and ca other Canadians don't know uh, good music of it. Bit you on the ass. Something like that. You'd be pleasantly surprised if you give it a listen. Okay, and I will, I will keep an open mind. I've listened to the last couple Iron Maiden albums, and I was not all that happy. But again, they haven't had a perfect album in a long time either, so. Let me write on this story. Stop, go away. Go lay down or something.
What are you doing? The cat's annoying. A annoying. All right, I'm gonna go dump my coffee cup. I don't have to go to the bathroom, Frank. Don't worry about it. And get ready because I, I can smell the <clears throat> the oil from this salad. Salad oil. And since my wife is not home, I'm asking the, eating the last three or four Lemon Ups Girl Scout cookies. Crispy lemon flavored cookies with inspiring messages to lift your spirit. <coughs> I didn't even know there was inspiring messages. Let's see. This one says, go get, oh, I am a go-getter. I am a go-getter. Right in my mouth. No, I didn't have to poop. At some point I will. Yeah, I'm telling you. This says, I am a leader, bitches. Leader of the bitches. Man, that's all I need. Cookies and encourage and enable me. Curse you and your fiendish plots girl. Yeah, exactly. This last one says, buy more Girl Scout cookies now. This one says, I'm a risk taker. Girlfriend. Doesn't say girlfriend. I just added that last part. These are delicious.
did you have those ones that are like Thin Mints but raspberry flavored? Uh, Dingleberry Crunch. No. Thin raspberries. No. My wife bought two boxes of Thin Mints. Her favorite are Dosey Dos. I'm not allowed to eat the Dosey Dos. We got some new one that's like caramel and chocolate. I don't remember the name of those. We ate those the first night. And then I get the um, the peanut butter ones. I'll probably eat those later. She got like 12 boxes. I think you're down to like five. What on earth is a dosy do? It's a um, it's a Girl Scout cookie. It's um, you know how best to describe it? Fucking Google it, man. Just Google it. Yeah, the Samoas um, are uh, are one of my favorites as well. She does not like the Samoas, so I I eat that box like first. Thin Mint, she got it. She she went to open them. I'm like, what are you doing? You got to take the Thin Mints. We got to put these in the freezer. You can't just eat these at room temperature like this. What are you, an animal? And <laughs> hey, those things got to go in the freezer. Yeah, do you put the Thin Mints in the fridge freezer or do you eat them at room temperature like a savage? No, no. Well, there's no savage cookie eating here. Yeah, I don't think so. Samoa's are hype. The dosi dos aren't my favorite anyway, so I don't care that she keeps those. Yeah, that is that is barbaric. My wife's um, so she does this thing, where she buys like two to four boxes of of the dosi dos, and then she puts them in the cabinet away from all the other snacks. And she still has a box in there from last year that she savors. She'll eat like two or three cookies here and there. And I'm like, there's like 12 cookies in the whole box. You know what I mean? Just eat the fucking, eat half a box. Like Thin Mints, you freeze them. And there's two sleeves in the box. And then you eat an entire sleeve. That's what you're supposed to do. Turkey Hill had a thin mince ice cream. Yeah, it's delicious. I go with dosey dose, not not dose wide dose. It's to spell it. Just look up, just look up Girl Scout cookie, and it'll show you. I'm not explaining it. I'm also not going to get the box to read what they are. They're good. They're just not. They're not great. Mm, a bit the inside of my cheek last night now it's bothering me I hate that I feel like I'm gonna move my mouth wrong and I'm gonna take like strip like an entire chunk of my of my throat and I'm, my teeth are gonna be sticking out sweet bread flavored biscuits Samoas don't last more than half a day nor nor should they I mean those need to be eaten right away Last night we went to dinner, uh, Cedar River, the uh, seafood restaurant, with her sister and her sister's friend. Before they got in the car, they're supposed to leave 6 a.m. this morning to drive to Dallas. They didn't leave till about uh, after 10 because, yeah. But uh, her 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 sister's friend, I I did not like this woman right off the bat. Okay. Because she had an answer for everything. Let me give you an example. Um, my wife is trying to help fix up my, my, my mother-in-law's house. So because my sister has like 15 dogs in the house, um, the floors up, the carpets upstairs are just ripped apart. There's smells like piss. She lets the dog shit on them. It's just disgusting. So while she's gone, she was like, you know what? I'm gonna rip up all the, uh, rip out all the carpet, and we're just gonna lay down flooring. And so then you just mop and clean it, and then it, it hopefully it won't stink. The windows upstairs. It's an old house. It's forty something years old house. The windows upstairs. None of them open anymore. She's gonna get all the the windows repaired. And you know, it's like those 1980s windows, so they they really don't help you 
for your heating bill or anything. So she's gonna she's gonna do all of that and have it all painted and everything, make it real nice. So even with my sister-in-law comes back, slob she is, and she lets all these dogs run around. Um, it won't hopefully be as disgusting. And then my wife can actually stay there and sleep there. And so she's like, oh, I got, she's telling her, her sister, oh, I got the thing in for, you know, for the, uh, oh, and also blinds. All the, every, every room in that, like 20 different windows, they all have like blinds literally from like the 80s. So they're like dry rotted, they're falling apart. Some of them you can't, if you pull the thing, they just, they all fall out of the window. They're, you know, old. Thank you, Mr. Frank. And so, um, she's telling, she's like, well, you know, so there, here's the quote and whatever the quote is like, oh, it's like, you know, $6,000 for them to do this, 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 this. And, this. and her, her friend was like, oh, do you guys have like temp labor places down here? Like, yeah, you should hire some temp labor. And then if you go and buy the blinds, you know, how, I mean, those would be like $20, $25 a blind. You know how much money you'll save? And Shelly's like, I don't have time for that. I have my, I have a full-time job. I have to watch my mother with dementia. I have to now fix up her house. I have my own house. I, I have a husband. I have all these things. I have to watch 10 of her dogs. I mean, I don't have time for all that. It's worth me. To pay somebody to do that, and then that's out of the way. And then about the flooring, you know, if you just if you buy the flooring, and you and she kept so she kept doing that, like everything was. Um, they're talking about her mom. Oh, her, you know, her mom. Whatever she's like. Oh, she she only wants to eat the same thing because she doesn't realize she's she's eating the same thing every day. Oh well, what oh, this is what I would do. And then she's got to give like and like the whole time at dinner. I just shake my head. I'm thinking. Just, so finally, she said something else, and I just said, "I was being really nice, but I said, uh, hey, she's not asking for an opinion on stuff. She, she's not. This isn't like a group chat. I'm being quiet because this is her thing, and she's just explaining to her sister what she's going to do. She's not asking Terry for an opinion. She's definitely not asking you or I for an opinion. So it is. It is what it is. We're just kind of supposed to sit here and listen." And I was like, I know that came off as very rude, but I don't care. I will never see this woman again. And um, so my sister, I don't know if I told everybody, my sister-in-law in her house in Dallas, some guy is squatting, has been squatting in it illegally for like six months. So she's going out there to throw him out. Well, this lady, I didn't realize until afterwards, thank God. This lady is her that guy's uh, ex-wife. I'm like, so you're still hanging out with these people. Just ridiculous. So there it was. So I could not wait to get yeah, very convoluted. I could not wait to uh, get away from that lady. And I was, afterwards, we get in the car and said, "All right, so here's my opinion." And Shelly laughed because she knew I was not impressed with this uh, with this woman at all. And she would bring up like stupid, like she's like, we were talking about TV shows. The only thing I could talk to my sister in law about is like TV, garbage TV shows because it gives us something to talk about. We don't talk about anything. We don't talk about politics. Nothing. I don't want to talk about anything even halfway serious with her. Because my opinion and her opinion are two different things. And she says that her friend's like, I don't even really know what we were talking about. And her friend was like, um, I mean, like naked and afraid. Why are they naked? I said, because then if they weren't, the show would just be called afraid. I mean, that, that makes sense, right? But she really had no sense of humor. She's like, well, I, I just don't understand. I said, well, that's. That's the thing that, that when it was sold to the uh, the network, that's the thing that made it different, I guess. You know? I said, and we've watched, um, except for like, the, say, the last two, three seasons, we've watched almost every episode. But I'm like, shut up. She would enjoy socks. I don't think she would understand socks. To be honest with you, I don't think she would get it. And, and, but here's the thing too, Mr. Frank. Name, try to name somebody that wouldn't like socks. You know what I'm saying? 
Socks for those people listening on uh, watching this later on YouTube, in case you don't know. Socks is a, a great, great book by Tom Duffy. Hmm. A very cute, large male person. Just delivered my mail. I was hoping she got out to give me a package so I could check out her giant butt, but I, I did not see that. So yeah, Tom Duffy. Tom Duffy, ladies and gentlemen, Tom Duffy. <laughs> it's a think piece, yes. You read it and you think, what the hell did I just read? Oh, Mr. Frank. Ooh, burping up the uh, salad now. That's the bad thing about lettuce. Oh, it's so good for you. Yeah, just burp it up all the time. Gross. Oh, Mr. Frank. I was thinking about doing the... Originally, I was like, oh, I'm going to watch these noir films. Maybe I'll do... I'll jump on live late at night after I've watched the three, and I'll jump on TikTok or Twitch, and then I'll just talk about them then. I'll just say, nah, because then I'll have people on, and we'll, we'll, we'll be in the weeds on other stuff, and... Then I was like, oh, I'll just do, like, a YouTube video. Maybe I'll just do it on my phone. I'll do a... And I was like, nah. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to write, do quick write-ups. That way I can do the movie posters and whatnot. And I'll do, um, I'll just do Patreon. And it'll be fun. It'll be fun because then it'll, it'll all be in one place. It'll become an underground classic and sell millions, but only after I'm dead and can't enjoy it. Well, yeah, obviously. Obviously. Only your, your great, great grandkids will benefit from that one. And I'm sure you will have tons of great, great grandkids. Just seems like a no-brainer to me. So, so there you go. My new baseball game dropped today out of the park 25, except it is not live yet. I played the last three days, I played the, um, the beta version of it. And today, this morning, it was supposed to go live, and, and they're having a problem with Steam. is not uh, dropped it yet, so we can't, I uh, can't play it yet. I'm really annoyed with that, because I was like, you know what? So this morning, for those who don't know, Dirty Deeds 12, the final book in the series, went live, ebook, um, And then I put together the, this morning I totally forgot the last couple days, so I put together the print version of it. Put that up. That should hopefully be going live soon. And by the end of the month, or sooner, the audiobook version of Dirty Deeds 12 will go live. I'm also, um... Other thing I have is I'm going to put a book up on Vela, probably this weekend. I think they've changed the rules now as how many things are free and all this stuff, so I'm going to have to look at that first. Um, because i got like five different books I can... I can 
put up on Zella and make some money that's not in brand, more of horror stuff. Um, what was the other thing I was going to do? Look at my list. Oh, Down and Dirty 1. I've gotten the um, edits back on it now. So I just got to edit it, and then that I'm going to do a pre-order on that one coming up. Uh, I'm thinking that will be a June release. I'm not doing rapid release on those. Um, like I'm going to do June, and then probably September, and then not until March next year. That'll be one, two, and three. It's a six-book series. Because I've already penciled in on my board here. For July, Tom and I will be doing the um, Johnny Bell Heist trilogy as a box set. Tom, just so you know. Um, and then I have my, November I have my next, my fifth short story collection. And then December, January, and February next year, the next trilogy, uh, me and Tom, which you're currently writing now. Tom, please... Finish this chapter today if you can. And then um, that should be it. Look at Michael Schotter. You're like, you're like peaks and valleys. Bummer. Congrats. It's like the lowest of the lows and the highest of the highs, my friend. So there you go. So that's some of the things that are, that are coming out that I'm doing. Again, this weekend, I don't have a car. Not that I would go anywhere anyway. And, um, you took me on a run there. <laughs> exactly. 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 You're crying. You're happy. I mean, it's, it's a gamut of all emotions. That's, that's what, that's what this Twitch really is. This Twitch isn't around, isn't about some idiot sitting here writing crappy stories. No, this is, this is an emotional roller coaster. Can he say that on YouTube? We're going to find out, Mr. Frank. We're going to find out. So there you go. Mm. Yesterday I went to, um, I laughed, I cried, it became a part of me. <laughs> and stuff. And whatnot. Yesterday I went to, uh, hung out at the Chinese buffet with three different guys named Mike, Amanda Ward, and um, <clears throat> Wynn, but the good Wynn, not the bad, bad Wynn. Burn is vulgar in Canada. The language of all Canadians, Canada. We had a good, uh, we had a good uh, lunch. We had a lot of nice talk, and we talked about AI. We talked about random stupid things. We ate some Chinese food. So at this point, all three mics are invited to MondoCon and Goodwin, not Goodwin. Like his name isn't Goodwin. It's the, the good version of win, as opposed to the bad win, that other guy, win, lose, or draw. He, um, bomb, burn, whatever. Exactly. I'm, I'm halfway reading your crap anyway. Um, so they will all be here. So we'll have, uh, I think we'll have like five new people at MondoCon. This year, which will be uh, interesting. It'll be very interesting. My stomach's making noises. You know what that means, Mr. Frank. Well, there's more than one win? Yeah. There's there's two two wins, apparently. This new one I've been hanging out with uh, when I do the Amelia Island uh, Friday, one, one month, one Friday a month at the coffee shop. Winfield. He's a writer. He has actually has a book out, and he has a couple more books. Um... So yeah, so I invited him to our lunch 
uh, Chinese buffet lunch, which he uh, which he came to. He's very excited about Mondo Khan, so I told him. Peter Marsh was also very excited when I talked to him yesterday. Peter Marsh will also be here. So, And a couple other people to talk to to invite. Two wins. That's a win-win situation. I see what you did there. As opposed to the win-lose-draw other one. That guy will not... That guy, I guess he might be here if he's... Um, if he's going to be part of Clay County, Clay County group that shows up on the uh, Saturday Saturday morning. I just I just answered you back, Tom. Just so you know. So there you go. So there 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 we're all setting up. Shelly is very excited because now she has like five more people coming that she's never had to cook for. So I told her I also told her no M and M's this year. But then I know that Frank's gonna mention it and I know we're gonna get M and M's. And the only reason I say no M&M's is because nobody eats them. And then there's like 47 pounds of M&M's that I'm forced to eat. Forced. Reminds me of that bit from Hudson Hawk. Seriously, Hudson Hawk, this is Positive Friday, Michael. There were 6,000 Wongs in the phone book. That's a lot of Wong numbers. If that's what you remember from Hudson Hawk. <laughs> Hudson Hawk. That just seemed really random. I'll be honest with you. That's a really random thing to quote. I think if I get to the next page on this, I will also break 2,000 words on this story. 
I like to go deep into the vaults on this. That's not even, like, why... I'm going to say this, and I'm going to try not to be mad at you, Michael Schotter. Why the hell is Hudson Hawk in the, in the vault at all? That should be thrown in a ditch somewhere. Schotter wins the internet today for a Hudson Hawk reference, right? Tom Duffy says, chapter done? Holy crap, Tom! You the man! You! You the... Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, I'm going to finish this page here. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be totally, completely honest with you. I'm probably going to go take a poop. And then I will jump right back into that other one. I don't expect you to write tonight. Obviously, you got a big night ahead of you. I appreciate that. If you get to it tomorrow morning, before you guys go out, that would be awesome. I'd like to start rolling on this thing, especially since I'm going to have a very, very shitty week coming up without my wife here. Let me finish this last three, four lines here. You can take a poop, but can you hold a poop? No, I can't hold them. No, those are those those just go. LOL, I find that unapologetically amusing when I'm in the right mood. I get you gotta be in the right mood. You gotta be in the right mood to watch to watch Hudson Hawk, and you gotta be in the right mood to remember that you watched Hudson Hawk. What are your streaming agenda for the weekend? I intend to finish the new season of Somebody Feed Phil. I've not started the new season at all. Um, probably I'll probably wait. Uh, a couple weeks for, until my wife is home to watch that because she enjoyed that too. I have no idea. I imagine I am going to be streaming. I would probably imagine to be around noonish or something like that um, the next couple of days. Although I might, I might go later. I don't know. I will be on. How about that? Saturday I should be on. Sunday I should be on. The only thing that changes is if they fix my car today. And then I have to get up early. My wife's got to come over, pick me up, and get my car. Otherwise, it would be good. I think tonight for dinner, I'm going to make my uh, undebossed. And then eat that over the weekend. I'd watch Hudson Hawk before I'd watch Cobra. That's, in that's an interesting take. I th you might be right. You know what? You might, you might be right. There are some... Um, there are some movies. Uh, I remember somebody said one time, I don't remember who, somebody said, like, every Sylvester Stallone movie is great. And I'm thinking, no, you haven't seen all of them. Like, like yeah, yeah, okay, Rocky, you know what I'm saying? There's, there's several there. I like The Expendables' first couple of movies. Well, there's a lot of garbage. A lot of garbage. So there you go. Apparently, I just also lost a viewer as well. So somebody's like, fuck this. You don't know what you're talking about. 
You know what Stallone movie I love that don't get no play? Oscar. I don't know what that is. Maybe if I run through all the noir films, I'll, then I'll start watching. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll start watching Sylvester Stallone movies. Just go right right through all the Sylvester Stallone movies. Who knows? All right, I'm out of here. Thank you for hanging out, everybody. I appreciate you hanging out with me on this Positive Friday. A reminder to resubscribe or to subscribe on my Twitch and also on my YouTube. You know, go to YouTube. None of this is costing you any big bucks. So, uh, no excuses. Appreciate it. When he's a mafia boss, trunk to go legit. Trying to go legit, maybe? Like, I like Stallone in that uh, TV show. What's the TV show? I like that uh, that one. I liked him in um, Copland. I thought Stallone was good in that. I thought I thought Stallone was phenomenal in um, Casablanca. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. I will be on this weekend.